heresy, heretic, paradigm shifting, unbiblical, unorthodox, unexpected, gentle, playful, tender, challenging, loving. I had a gal that wrote me and said, I just finished The Shack. It's the most juvenile piece of trash I've ever read. I wrote her back and said, you know, you might be right, but look how God is using this juvenile piece of trash to touch the hearts of people. And if that's all I have to bring to the table, man, I'm so thrilled to be a part of this. You know, I had a guy stand up um, at a Q&A in Portland not long ago and tears running down his face. He's in his 40s and he says, I don't have a question. He says, I've got a comment. I just got off the phone with my mom who's been an avowed atheist her whole life. And she just called me and said, son, I read the shack. I now believe there is a God and that Jesus is the Son of God. Who cares about criticism after that? You know, just one of those. What God has done with this little thing is it's remarkable. The shack is it's a mystery suspense wrapped in a what if. What if there is a God who loves us relentlessly all the time and pursues us even in the midst of all of our crap? What if there's a God who shows up in the middle of the details of our lives? And the book is about a man who suffers an incredible loss that dumps him into what I call the great sadness, uh, something that many, many, many people in this world identify with. And he's lost. He's lost in his great sadness. And he gets an invitation mysteriously back to the very focal point of his loss. And it's written in a mysterious sort of way. He doesn't understand whether it's from the perpetrator of the evil and the hurt or it's from just a bad joke or maybe... Maybe it's even from God. And he goes back to the center of his pain to begin to deal with what's got him stuck. And the story unfolds from there. I wrote the book because uh, my wife Kim had asked me to write it. And, and she'd been asking me for a while. I've always uh, give, uh, written as gifts. I've never published anything, never was trying to publish anything. And so um, in 2005, I felt at the place of of healing enough in my own heart that I was ready to do this. And it was sort of a legacy piece. It was a gift for the kids for Christmas. And, and uh, to say, you know, this is after 50 years. This is what your dad thinks about God and pain and process and, and uh, um, about evil and forgiveness and all those kinds of things that were real major issues for me growing up. And so, you know, didn't have the money at Christmas. After Christmas, went down to Office Depot and made 15 copies. And that's all I ever intended. And the book really did everything that I wanted it to do. Gave it to, to Kim and the kids. I have six children, 16 to 29 years of age. And, uh, you know, it takes them a while to read a book. You give them a book for Christmas, you know. Thanks, Dad, you know. I'll get right on that, you know. <laughs> but they read it and loved it. So um, then my friends, you know, it's my friends who kept giving it away that got me in trouble. The book is true. It's just not real. And that's fiction. Uh, you know, it's wrapped up into my history because I wrote it for my kids. I mean, they're in it in different ways, and Kim's in it, my wife, and, and uh, a writer. And the, this is the best way anybody's put it so far, is a writer from Nashville who said uh, early on, she said, I don't know your history at all, but my sense is that Missy represents something murdered in you as a child, probably your innocence, and Mackenzie is you as an adult trying to deal with that. And uh, I showed it to Kim, my wife, and she said, boy, she nailed it. So it's, it's got uh, definitely um, layers of meaning, and it's a metaphor that goes very deep into my own heart. Um, so it's, I never lost a child this way. We've been through deaths in our family, including my five-year-old niece the day after her fifth birthday. So we know some of that pain, but this is much more dealing with the heart of a, of a human being, the soul of a human being, and the losses that are involved in that. And I think that's partly why it extends so universally across, across culture. Yeah. As you change in terms of your own journey, you will find that the book will speak to you differently. I've had friends who've gone through it a dozen times, and, and because of events and changes in their own lives, they hear parts of it differently than they did before. Favorite character? Well, my favorite character is Mackenzie, just because I identify with him. But as far as the characters themselves, they are each so magnificent. I love Papa, and I love Saryu, the Holy Spirit.
the most diverse character for me that was, an, was a surprise was Sophia in the cave. And uh, just the wisdom of God personified as a Hispanic woman who is in your face about, okay, what's really going on here and pushing you to deal with it. Um, I think that was, that was very, very special. Um, you know, Papa has all kinds of nuances that you don't expect because you're so used to a Western dualistic uh, omni-being dwelling in a distant heaven, disapproving and disappointed. And uh, so Papa's character is very nuanced. And the Holy Spirit has also got the whole, the whole movement of wind and everything else that's a part of that. So, you know, hard to say. I like my characters. I am actually working on writing the screenplay. So, um, you bet. You bet. And it just seems to be the right. I've already been working with a script consultant, and we've hammered out all the bones. And so we're very excited about it the way it's going. I just have to have some time to fill in all the meat, you know.